Introduction to Business What is business? An organization or economic system where goods and services are exchanged for one another or for money. Every business requires some form of investment and enough customers to whom its output can be sold on a consistent basis in order to make a profit. Businesses can be privately owned, not for profit or state-owned. Business is the way men make their livings, and because there are many men with many talents and skills, the ways of making a living can be counted by the thousands. They are bound up with every activity of life. The complex sum of these activities we call the business world. Nature of business Industry Manufacturing industry converts the basis goods raw materials into the finished goods. In other words, industry creates form utility in the goods already produced by nature, like furniture by wood, machines by iron, and cloth in, made by cotton. Extractive industry is generally related with the production of primary goods. These industries are associated with agriculture, pastures, mining, and fish keeping or finishing. These industries produce primary goods which are used in manufacturing industry as raw materials. These industries get the goods from surface, beneath the surface, and in the space. Construction industry. Activities of the construction industry are related to the houses, buildings, dams, bridges, canals, and etc. Genetic industry is concerned with the activities which increase the kinds of species. These industries can increase or change the kind and species of plants, fruits, animals, etc. through genetic changes. Incorporation A governmental authority administers incorporation. In the United States, incorporation is a state process, not a national or federal process. States have varied incorporation requirements with some states being pro-business. Other states seem more interested in protecting investors and keeping a close watch over firms rather than making it easy for businesses to incorporate. Incorporation is not a complicated process even when states are not pro-business, nor is it expensive. Once incorporated, the firm assumes the legal status of an individual. This provides the owners or executives personal protection. Another benefit of corporations over sole proprietorship and partnerships as a legal business entity is that individual investors can sell their interest in the firm, which are shares of stock, without disrupting the firm itself. Entrepreneurs Entrepreneurs are the future. Citizens need to influence their governments to create a user-friendly environment so ideas of creative individuals can evolve into new products and services. Entrepreneurs attempt to commercialize new ideas or concepts and thus bring new products and services to the consumer. They keep the economic environment vigorous. In the arena of starting small businesses, entrepreneurs are unique individuals that have an edge over executives and managers from larger corporations. That edge is the ability to tolerate more risk, take on more encompassing problems, make decisions with less knowledge, and harness the drive and commitment that comes from being an owner. Qualities of a good businessman A well-managed business are persons who have inherent or acquired qualities of leadership and direction. So a businessman to succeed must be a well-balanced and full-fledged man of talent. He must have a consistent mind of clearness, steadiness, and firmness in his dealings with others. Some of important and basic qualities of businessman are the following. Accuracy. The businessman is that who knows what he is talking about and what he means. Because he deals with a number of simple ones, accurate action depends upon accurate thinking. The good businessman must be able to grasp his problems by treating them quantitatively. Time sense. Besides quantity and the nature of his product, the businessman must appreciate time. He must always be thinking in terms of time. Alertness. A businessman keen on success keep in the weed and with the world and not keep himself to himself. He should move about and see what is going on for he has to gauge new wants and new inventions for creating fresh ones. 
he must be wide awake and meet the existing demands and be in a position to create new ones. Honesty. In order to adequately satisfy consumer demands, the businessman must be honest. Ability to cooperate. He must be able to compromise, adjust, adopt, and be willing to admit that his judgment may on occasions be wrong. He shall be a good, a good businessman if he can place himself in the shoes of other people inside his own business so as to see into the minds of customers who are outside it. Dependability. Having once brought an organization into existence, the businessman should use every effort to hold it constant and dependable so that those who work under it know what to expect as it remains unfluctuating from day to day. A dependable businessman has satisfied co-workers who are inevitably loyal to him and the unit directed by him. Energy. A bountiful endowment of physical and nervous energy is another request, requisite without which other qualities are hardly of any value. Character. All talents are greatly enhanced in value when to them is added moral character because this gives the promise of energy, loyalty, and steady growth in ability and economy in supervision. Economic Systems Any society, whether it is rural without any advancements or it is specialized, must somehow confront three fundamental and interdependent economic problems. First, what and how much to produce, how to produce, and for whom to produce. These three questions are fundamental and common to all economic, but different economic systems differ in the fact that they try to solve this differently. The four types of economic Traditional economic system A traditional economic system is the best place to start because it is, quite literally, the most traditional and ancient type of economy in the world. Traditional economies still produce products and services that are direct result of their beliefs, customs, traditions, religions, etc. Vast portions of the world still function under a traditional system. These areas tend to be rural, second or third world, and closely tied to the land, usually through farming. Traditional economies would never ever in a million years see the type of profit or surplus that results from a market or mixed economy. In general, surplus is a rare thing. A third world and or indigenous country does not have the resource necessary. Or if they do, they are controlled by wealthier economies, often by force. And in many cases, any surplus is either distributed, wasted, or paid to some authority that has been given power. Command economic system. In terms of economic advancement, the command economic system is the next step up from a traditional economy. This by no means indicates that it is fairer or an exact improvement. There are many things fundamentally wrong with the command economy. The most notable feature of a command economy is that a large part of economic system is controlled by a centralized power, often a federal government. This kind of economy tends to develop when a country finds itself in a position of a very large amount amount of valuable resources. The government then steps in and regulates the resources. Often, the government will own everything involved in the industrial process from the equipment to the facilities. First of all, a command economy is capable of creating a healthy supply of its own resources and it generally rewards its own people with affordable prices. But because it is ultimately regulated by the government, it is ultimately priced by the government. Still, there is often no shortage of jobs as the government functions similarly, similarity to a market economy in that it wants to grow and grow upon its populace. Market economic system A market economy is very similar to a free market. The government does not control vital resources, valuable goods, or any other major segment of the economy. In this way, organizations run by the people determine how the economy runs how supplies generated, and what demands are necessary. Capitalism and Socialism No truly free market economy exists in the world. For example, while America is a cap capitalist nation, our government still regulates or attempts to regulate fair trade, government programs, moral business, monopolies, etc. 
the advantage to capitalism is you can have an explosive economy that is very well controlled and relatively safe. This would be contrasted to socialism, in which the government, like a command economy, controls and owns the most profitable and vital industries, but allows the rest of the market to operate freely, that is, price is allowed to fluctuate freely based on supply and demand. Mixed economic system. A mixed economic system, also known as a dual economy, is just like it sounds, a combination of economic systems. But it primarily refers to a mixture of a market and command economy, for obvious reasons. A traditional economy does not typically mix well. In the most common types of mixed economies, the market is more or less free of government ownership, except for a few key areas. These areas are usually not the resources that a command economy controls. Instead, as in America, they are the government programs such as education, transportation, USPS, etc. While all of these industries also exist in the private sector in America, this is not always the case for a mixed economy. The disadvantages of a mixed economy While a mixed economy can lead to incredible results, America being the obvious example, it can also suffer from similar downfalls found in other economies. For example, the last hundred years in America has seen a rise in government power, not just in imposing laws and regulations, but in actually gaining control, becoming more difficult to access while simultaneously becoming less flexible. This is a common tendency of mixed economies.